Welcome you all to Day with FM. Day with FM is a global initiative to bring in leadership insights and their experience creating an impact. And also education series which talks about why is upskilling and reskilling is important uh, in today's scenario. And today is going to be very interesting uh, a subject. We talk about education in FM and uh, we have Johnny Winken who is a master uh, in this zone. And uh, welcome Johnny and uh, we have Lisa. Lisa is my co-host today. And welcome Lisa and over to you. Thank you. Johnny, we're so happy to have you here. You've been instrumental in developing the careers of so many FMs through education. I know that you've touched both of our careers. So we're delighted that you were able to make time with us, especially in view of your travel schedule. In this time when there are so many opportunities in FM, we'd like to talk about FM as a career choice and the development of that career path. So to start with, we know that FM offers career paths to suit nearly every liking. What do you think is the best way for an aspiring FM to hone in on a path and discover their passion for that work? So the most important thing that I tell everybody is if you love what you do, then it's not work. So figure out what it is in the facility area or in the built environment that you love to do. In my case, it's the way that systems interact in buildings to create an environment. So figure out what it is that you're passionate about because then it's not work anymore. You're doing it because you love it. And the continuing education that you need to do will be part of what you do. It, it'll become what you are that's the way to get into or hone into where your path is going to be in facility managers or in facility management. Sometimes it's not, you're not going to be the boss. I never was. I, I aspired to a relatively high level, but I never wanted to be the boss boss. I wanted to take care of facilities. That's what I like to do. Thank you, Johnny. I think um, it's very, very important for us to understand uh, what drives me because it's a very vast built environment is very vast. And what drives me, what uh, passionates me is very, very important. And now if you look at uh, Pacific Majors, they come from a different backgrounds. And um, uh, we always say that an accidental facility managers because they didn't choose this, they, they didn't uh, come with the choice, they came with the choice. So do you believe that there is a best path in terms of education and training for a facility managers because all of them come from a different background and there is, there is a dynamics in this profession, which is evolving. Mm -hmm. So the issue with facility management is the breadth and scope of what you would be responsible for as a facility manager is so vast that it's un unpos impossible for anybody to know everything. So focus in on what you like and you will aspire. As I said before, my passion is building services. So I focused on that and your passion to manage the facilities in a way that is beneficial to the organization will come visible to the executives and you'll start to move up. So is there a best, best path of education? Whether it's engineering, whether it's business management, whether it's accounting, I've seen people come from, as you said, all over the spectrum of academics into facilities management. But the thing is, is if you're not passionate about it, it's not going to matter. So what's the best path? Well, I don't know. As an engineer, I tell people, this is kind of funny. I tell people engineering is probably the worst because we're too focused on the academics rather than the practical application because there's a significant difference. I find probably the best facility managers to have some type of a management degree or an arts degree because they're learning how to flow the information. They don't need to be the expert. They need to manage the information manage how things get done in the facilities to maximize productivity. I like that approach, Johnny. It, it uh, makes it very approachable for people from any background, no matter how they got into facility management. Mm -hmm. So in addition to education or coming up through the trades, uh, university degree programs or if credential programs, what suggestions would you share with facilities leaders to broaden their networks and to build their, their knowledge? So there's two things I suggest to people 
in order to do that. Um, first one is find an association of like-minded people. Um, I, obviously, I've been in IFMA for a significant number of years, I think almost 40 now. And the reason that I'm in IFMA is because I like the way people share information. As I said in the second question, the breadth and scope of what you need to know is impossible for one person to know. So if you don't have a good network that's willing to share, then you're going to be struggling throughout your career because you're going to have to be learning at, uh, continuously at the best level. So first of all, find an association or a group of peers that you can network with and have open discussions, not people who are hiding their information. The second issue in terms of broadening knowledge is um, in terms of training, I tell people beyond the standard facility management training or ops and maintenance training or whatever, I highly recommend people take some type of customer service training. And the reason for that is the perception of facilities management is only as good as our interaction with people because it's people that we're serving. So if you do not understand the core concepts of customer service, you're going to be doing what you think is the right thing, but that may not be what they want. And figuring that out is part of the most important thing that a facility manager does. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, it's well articulated. I think what is important is to understand uh, the needs of the customer and how do we manage them. I think today it's all about how do we create the user experience. And everybody will have an aspiration. I think that's uh, the natural phenomenon. That's uh, also uh, that everybody aspiring to grow as a leader, right? When we talk about how does staff aspiring to be a leader in an organization uh, to use FM to showcase their value? I think this is very important that how do they showcase the value of an FM to demonstrate as a leader in an organization? So the analogy I give people is how many times do you sit in your office and the phone rings and the people on the other end of the line give you the impression that you are doing nothing more than sitting there waiting for them to call, right? <laughs> so the standard impression or the generally accepted impression of facilities management is we're just there to solve problems. What truly is the power of facilities management is showing organizations how the facilities are supporting production. I was literally just talking about this an hour ago with a person I mentor in the Middle East. And the suggestion I gave to him was this, you have a person sitting at their office doing their work and their task light goes out. So how much time do they spend changing the outlet or changing the plug into a different plug to try to get their light working? That didn't work. So now they talk to their peers around them. Who do I need to call to fix this light? Once they figure that out, they call and get to get the light fixed. And then how long does it take to get that work request done to get the light fixed? So all of that time is time that the organization is paying that person for that is not what they're intended to do so that's loss of product productivity and the primary concept of facilities management is very simple organizations construct buildings only to be productive and if the buildings get in the way of that productivity whether it be how many cars you build how many insurance policies you put out or how many bank accounts you touched once the buildings get in the way of that productivity then there's going to be an issue. So the way that FMs can show their value to the organization is to show them, show the organization how they're supporting the strategic objectives. Because facilities management in its, in its core is a support to any business. Unless you're working for an FM contractor where FM is the core business, every other FM in the world is actually supporting the organization that employs them and what is their core business and how do we support it something as simple i gave you the example of a light think about also the ac if the organization suddenly decides to double their occupancy in a building and the ac system is not there to support it the people are not going to be comfortable they're not going to be as productive you're going to have more people at home not at work 
another example of where FM supports the organization. That's how FMs showcase their value. Show how the facilities are supporting the organization and how your work managing it is actually benefiting that. That's fabulous, Johnny. It's particularly important right now in this hybrid environment and where so many organizations are sort of reshuffling their spaces and what the workplace means. So that was a great example. Thank, thank you, Johnny. I think what is important is, as you rightly mentioned, uh, we are not the core functions, but how do we enable the core function to achieve their goals is very, very important. That's where we create an impact, whether it's a business continuity, our operations, health and safety, our wellness at office, our ensuring uh, user experience is very, very critical. Today, buildings are not just uh, physical elements. They are actually reflecting the culture of an organization. It is reflecting uh, the emotions. And typically, we're also integrating emotions and human factors. And now the workplace can actually increase the productivity as well as uh, efficiency of people. And, um, and uh, thank you for all your insight. Today, it's not just about FM doing a built environment job today it has gone beyond our physical building we also manage virtual environment uh, as we have hybrid model as johnny said networking and i cannot be expert in everything but how do i build my knowledge right i need to understand at least the high level of the knowledge where what are the functions i manage at least i should have that eagle side view of what we manage and for that it is important that we network we expand our arizona we meet people understand the best practices globally and uh, Thank you, Johnny, for being here. I think uh, it was an interesting uh, insights and we'd like to have again uh, a session with you. And thank you, Lisa. And uh, keep uh, watching us. And if you have any specific topics you want us to cover and you have any specific leader you want us to bring it on this platform, please let us know and write to us. And thank you. Thank you all. Thank you both. Thank you.